Today, live from Cincinnati's Fountain Square. And good morning again, everyone. It is 7.07 now. There's a place to go tonight for Halloween if you're not up to braving the cold. The Newport Aquarium and Madcap Productions Puppet Theater presents Tales from the Sea, an October fantasy. Tales from the Sea runs from 6 till 9 tonight at Newport Aquarium. Admission is $10 for adults, 8 bucks for kids ages 3 to 12, under 3 or free. And the event includes a 45-minute production for kids, lots of puppets, you know, those larger-than-life Madcap puppets. Mm. There'll be games and treats. It's a good time. I got to go there already, and the puppets actually escort you through the Newport Aquarium. It's a lot of fun. Okay. You know, uh, there are plenty of strange jobs out there, and Chris Bayless has reported on many of them. But today, he's actually profiling a man who calls himself a ghost hunter. And this is part of a series of Halloween-related stories Chris has been doing this week called Morning Haunts. So, Chris, where did you find this guy? Hey, good morning, Cammie. His name is Barry Conrad. He's a product of the Tri-State. He was born and raised in Fairfield. He went to high school here. And he even worked as a local news photographer in Cincinnati for a while. He now lives in Los Angeles. And through his career shooting video, he's actually fallen into a very unusual line of work. I'm basically a, a ghost hunter. I go out and I try to find evidence of real paranormal phenomena. And we go out and interview witnesses. We uh, sit around haunted houses, talk to people who have had these experiences and try to determine whether or not there's actual paranormal phenomena going on. Barry Conrad says he first became interested in ghosts as a child growing up in Fairfield. He's now a full-time ghost hunter and a producer of a number of videos on the subject. Today there are several hundred if not a thousand people or more uh, actively investigating hauntings and poltergeist phenomena. Um, they go out with all kinds of equipment today like electromagnetometers, infrared motion detectors, um, thermal vision, uh, cameras that pick up uh, the heat from bodies and so forth or anything that emits a temperature and translates that into a video signal. Conrad specializes in documenting hauntings. And we try to go out and actually obtain evidence of poltergeist phenomena on videotape. He says he's recorded hundreds of cases, usually working in conjunction with a parapsychologist from the UCLA Neuropsychiatric Institute in Los Angeles. So how does a typical job begin? Uh, people who call us asking us uh, to come out and investigate their homes because they claim that they've seen things or heard things that go bump in the night that they can't explain. And actually a lot of people are, are very uh, frightened to even talk to us. So it takes quite a bit of courage for them in the first place to even call us. Conrad says his firm handles several cases a month. He keeps pretty busy despite a prevalent feeling of skepticism for his line of work. How it is in this business, a lot of people think you're crazy if they report it to the press or the media. So a lot of times we keep these cases discreet and anonymous. Now he mentioned the discreet and anonymous. A lot of people desire to have these uh, hauntings kept that way apparently and that's why according to Barry Conrad you don't hear about ghost hunters or these types of incidents in the news media very often. Coming up at 7.30 we'll tell you about the most graphic haunting incident that Barry Conrad has ever experienced and we'll show you the video. That's coming up at 7.30. All right, Chris, thank you so much. And if you'd like more information on Barry Conrad or if you'd like to buy one of his videos, just log on to the website and you can link to that through our website, which is wkrc.com. Just click on 12 links. And coming up tomorrow on Good Morning Cincinnati, Chris will sit down for a live chat with a national broadcasting personality. We're not going to say who it is just yet. You're going to 736 now. And in honor of Halloween, Chris Baelish has found a man with a, shall we say, hauntingly unusual job. Yes, this gentleman calls himself a ghost hunter, and Chris is profiling him this morning. It's part of a series of Halloween-related stories Chris has been doing this week called Morning Haunts. And Chris, you say this guy even has a series of videos out? Good morning, John. That's exactly right. Barry Conrad used to be a television news photographer here in the Cincinnati area. He, in fact, he grew up here. He was born and raised in Fairfield. He later moved to California with his videotape business and it now resides in Los Angeles. When he started documenting haunted houses about a decade ago, he had no idea that his work would lead to two best-selling videos. One is called uh, California's Most Haunted, and the other one documents his most famous and graphic haunting of all, it's called an unknown encounter. We get several cases a month. Barry Conrad is a full-time ghost hunter. 
He says many of the cases he works on are kept discreet at the request of the homeowner. Number one, they want to know what's going on in their house. And number two, they like to get rid of whatever it is that's haunting their house, especially if it's a malevolent entity. So what are some common signs that a house is haunted? Something that's throwing things around, maybe pinching them, uh, pulling on their bed sheets at night. Uh, these are all known things that ghosts and poltergeists do. Conrad cannot guarantee he'll get rid of the ghost. He tells clients he's there to do research and collect data. The most famous haunting he's ever worked on happened in 1989 in San Pedro, California. It later became the subject of his best-selling video titled An Unknown Encounter. One of our researchers was actually attacked in the attic by an unseen force, an invisible force, that put a rope around his neck and hung him in the attic. Uh, it was actually a, a small clothesline cord. It had been looped over his neck, twisted multiple times, and he was hung in this attic on the rafters uh, onto a nail. There was no explanation of how Jeff came to be on that nail. The researcher survived, and this haunting became famous because of that attack. Not only was this a man's story about being hung by an entity in that attic on that fateful night, but is the interesting part about it is the fact that we also picked up on our videotapes objective evidence that proves that something of a high strangeness occurred that night. Now, now as Barry Conrad says, something of a high strangeness is, occurred that night, and that is what he specializes in documenting. Coming up at 7.55, we'll talk a little bit about the skepticism that he encounters, and Barry has some choice words for all the skeptics out there. But John, as you know, we have things of a high strangeness happening around here all the time, most of them attributable to that uh, malevolent entity in the Weather Center. Back Watching. to you. Okay, cool. Great. That's Just the truth. All right, Chris, thank you so much. And if you'd like more information on Barry Conrad, or if you'd like to buy one of his videos, just log on to his website, and you can link to it through WK. It's uh, time for the final nugget now with Chris Baelish. Hi, Cammie. All morning we've been profiling a man named Barry Conrad. He calls himself a full-time ghost hunter, and he knows everybody doesn't believe in what he does. Here's what he says to the skeptics. I am definitely a believer in the supernatural after what I've experienced, primarily from that experience I had in San Pedro in 1989. There's no question in my mind now that there are forces beyond that are perhaps present in some other dimension, um, perhaps from someplace else that we can't even dream of. There's an old adage that I think sums it up the best. For the believer, no proof is necessary, but for the skeptic, no proof is really ever possible. Tomorrow morning, uh, Rambo and I will profile a national broadcasting personality. Chris and Rambo, coast to coast, that's tomorrow at 7 a.m. Now back to Fountain Square. Like he said.